So I have this function called c colon test, and when I run it, it says hi to the player who ran the, com the function. But let's say I want to say hi a little bit later. Well, traditionally you use slash schedule, but if you're familiar with commands and data packs, you would know that slash schedule, while it is useful for running something say 30 ticks later, it will lose all context and act like a server function or something like the load or the tick function. And so at S will not be a player and it will ran, be ran by the server. So my data pack basically turns the schedule function into two small commands that you run that allow you to actually select who you want to run the command as. So first you modify the data storage CB in and you set the values like this. So ticks tells you how many ticks you want it to happen at uh, later. Selector tells you the entities you want to run this at, and then everything else with the command is the command that actually runs. So once you have set up these different datas, immediately afterwards, you want to run the function CB schedule, and that will take this data off of the um, storage and apply it and have it run later. So if I do that 66 ticks later, I will get this boom, just like that. So that's really it. To, it's very simple, but very powerful. You can simplify a lot of your data packs if you have data packs where things need to happen later, which we might go over some examples of that at some point in the future. So that was it for how to use the pack. Now I'm going to explain how it works. So let's take a look at the schedule command. What does it do? Well, it runs a schedule internal function. And so if we go into the internal schedule function, it doesn't do all that much. It's not super complicated. So essentially what we do is we get the current time in ticks. Now this could be done using the slash game time command, but I actually use a scoreboard with a fake player that counts up from one. The reason I do that is because I'm not really sure the performance difference between time query and just grabbing a scoreboard. So it may be better time performance if you just grab a scoreboard. And also it allows you to reset that time value to zero every time they type reload and clear out the cache and everything. So it just looks very clean uh, and the numbers are much smaller. So it's easier to debug uh, while it's running. But anyways, so what we do is we empty out a data storage of entities, and then we run the internal schedule macros function. Uh, so this is a macro that will go to all of the entities inside the selector that you have provided and generate their UUID string using the GU library, which is used in this, and I will link it in the description. Then from the GU library, it will then um, grab all those datas and create a um, array of entities to apply the command to later. Uh, so we actually grab the entities that we want to operate on before we run, uh, before right when the command is scheduled, uh, which does cut down on the command cost when the actual scheduled command is trying to run. Uh, so then we go ahead and schedule this command for however many ticks later you want it to be. So pretty easy there. Then we are going to take the ticks value that you want, add it to the current game time, and save that value in the data storage somewhere. And so basically we are building a giant list of tasks, as I call them, for things to run later. So I'm going to change this just to demonstrate it so you can see the data structure. We will do say hi, and we will do 1000 ticks. So I run this and I do data get storage CB. And so now you can see the data structure. We have jobs and we have tasks. So let's take a look at tasks. So tasks are in a, is an array of timed events, commands to run at a specific time for specific entities. Now, of course, we don't have to constantly check the time on the data structure because we scheduled it to come back at the correct time. We just need to go through all the tasks and figure out which ones match the current time to figure out what we need to do at any given schedule. So we scheduled this function called callback and we scheduled callback start to happen at the exact time that we want our scheduled function to run. And so inside callback, we grab the time that the current scoreboard has, and then we filter the tasks for the ones that happen at this time. And so this allows it to do multiple tasks at the same time. If you have some kind of fast command thing that is scheduling things very quickly, sometimes the schedules may happen at the same time. This allows you to handle multiple at the same time. 
Uh, also, when we schedule this thing, we use schedule append, and so that'll all work out just fine. Now, if we take a look at this, we have callback cut tasks. So cut tasks is going to go to the, the uh, tasks array and look for ones that have a time which matches the time and appends them to the jobs array and removes them from the tasks array. So this array builds up and then as things get tasks get completed, they get removed. Okay, and they get taken to the jobs array. So the jobs array is a second array. And these are these are tasks that need to be completed on this tick in this iteration. And so the jobs go onto a scoreboard for how many you have to do. If there are no jobs, it actually just prints a uh, default say command to the chat just to let you know, by the way, we had a problem, there's no jobs. And this is just debugging help. Um, it shouldn't happen, but it can happen. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, the function which actually performs the jobs, which is loop jobs. So there could be multiple jobs because there could be multiple tasks at the same time. And so we loop through each of them, taking them off of the end of the jobs array to perform them. And so for each job, we have to loop through all of the entities. And again, we have a little save message letting us know when there could be an error. If you create a callback for no entities, this one, you might actually want to remove this command um, because it could actually happen in practice more often than you think. If you, for some reason, schedule something to run as an entity and that entity dies or disappears, then <laughs> this will trigger and say an error for the players. So you may want to remove this. So it will save however many entities are meant to perform this job and loop through all of them. So going through the list of entities, we are going to take one UUID at a time and perform a command. And that command is just simply as the entity with the hard-coded UUID, run the command the player specified. And that's really it. We loop through it, remove one from each, and <laughs> when we're done with that, <laughs> we are done performing the jobs for the entities. So I used a lot of fancy terms there, and it might have gotten a little confusing, and I didn't really go through every single command, but hopefully you kind of understood the general format of how things work. You have a global timer that counts up. When a player schedules a function, it saves the entities it's supposed to do it to, paired with the time it is supposed to be done. When the scheduled function scheduler function finishes, uh, or the callback function actually runs, it filters through all of the possible tasks that you have loaded into it at one given time and grabs the one that has the correct time. And from those that have the correct time, it grabs the list of all the entities and performs the command to each of those entities. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple, uses macros, uses new stuff, but it is very powerful and very nice for uh, quickly doing tasks that require delays. If you think this is useful, let me know what you plan to do with it in the comments, and I will see you next time. Peace.